everyone. This is Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Art Studio and welcome to the introductory video to the Animals Gone Zen Block of the Month series of videos that I'll be having each month for those of you who live out of town or for those who attend class but want to use this as a refresher to go back and look at techniques and or supplies that get used uh, during class. So without further ado, I'm going to address a lot of the things that you see on here on the table. You'll have to beg my, uh, or I'm gonna beg your indulgence in that I'm not a professional videographer, but I will do the best that I can. So if there is something that you do not understand or that you would like me to explain further, or if there's something about the video that really bothers you and you wanna let me know, you can text me at 303-818-3625. You can email me at Medina, D-O-M-A-R-T-S, that is Medina Dom Arts at AOL.com, or call me at 303-818-3625, and uh, let's chat and see what you uh, would like me to do better on these videos. I'm certainly open to suggestions, so you're certainly welcome to uh, provide your thoughts to me. So without further ado, the first thing I'm going to do here today in the video is I'm going to discuss all these products that you see here on the table for coloring that will probably get used at some point in time during the next 12 months as we do our blocks. Now for those of you who are just buying the block and the bling, you may say, oh, well, I don't really need this but I do wanna just pass along my suggestions to things that I find that work best and that color well and that I feel work easily with the cotton sateen that these products are, rather these blocks are stitched out on. Um, the very first thing that I would suggest doing, and this is something that I did for this class uh, that's uh, showing up this Friday, um, is I actually made a sample of every kind of color pen thing that I'm going to use. In this particular instance, these are various different pencils that I have used um, in some way in, in all the animals. Now, it is not necessary to purchase all these. Let me stress, um, because I know a lot of you have called me and asked me, well, do I need everything? Not necessarily. And so if you are going to purchase one single thing, I would say you would want to get the ink tense pencils, and we'll talk about those here in a little bit. But anyway, this is a color sample chart that I used. Uh, the three different types of products are ink tense pencils, Faber Castell watercolor pencils, and Prismacolor colored pencils. Watercolor pencils. Let me stress that. No, let me back up and say no. Those are actually the colored pencils. You can use Prismacolor watercolor pencils, but this sample was specifically the colored pencils, since I know many of you might already have this set. And so what I did was, this is one of those sheets, and I'm hang on here while I get the sample here real quick. I'm standing to video this, so uh, pardon my arms and legs and whatever else you may see, but I wanna show you the product. These are inkjet products uh, that you can run through your uh, inkjet printer. I actually typed this out on an Excel spreadsheet and then ran the grid and then I came back in and colored everything according to the color. Um, this way too, if I'm using various different products, I can decide on which might be the better color or which color basically is the same across all three types of pencils. The other thing I did was I actually went ahead and made similar uh, sheet for um, our markers. And this, these Fabrico uh, markers, um, I think I've told most of you, but in case you didn't get it, um, these are the ones that I actually think are the best to use. They are Sukuniko ink. And let me just show you that here real quick. I'm going to pull up green apple. And the equivalent of what is in the pins um, well, I don't have green apple on here, but if um, I had any one of these colors, for instance, lipstick pink or bubblegum pink or poppy red, it really is the same thing as this ink. So if any of you are adventurous and would like to try 
coloring with Sukuniko ink. I, I do carry it. Um, but the Fabrico markers, I think, are the easiest. They have great color coverage. They last forever. And um, I think overall they're a good uh, thing for their value. They also have two different tips. Let me pull one out for you. This is going to be Peapod. And one is the very small fine tip. The other one is more of a paintbrush tip. I hope everybody can see that. I'm trying to stay focused here. Um, anyway, it's one of the reasons I'm, I push those probably more than any of the other pens is that they are so versatile. Um, you will notice, however, I do have other types of fabric markers on here, Tulip and a new brand called Markables. So there's no you know, mandatory need to, to use all these. It's just that these colors match um, to what I have in the quilt itself. But you can obviously come over here and use Tulip without any problem. And down here at the bottom, I did include some of the glitter pins and I would highly encourage any of y'all, since you all like this quilt because of the, the bling on it, um, to pick yourself up some of these. Um, obviously my favorite are the Jelly Roll Stardust pins. And they come in about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I think it's a total of actually 14 colors. I didn't have all of them with me, so uh, I just ca captured the ones that I've used in the quilt. But there are other colors that I did not use. Pintail Sparkle Pins. If you want the alligator to look the way my alligator look, you will definitely need these Pintail Sparkle Pins. And I don't know if you can see this very well, but boy, oh boy, are those sparkly. I really, really like those. The next set of pins are recent new ones that I have uh, picked up from Australia, these Kaisercraft pins. And the turtle, in particular, the, what we're gonna be looking at today as far as colors, it uses a lot of these colors right here. They too have their own set of glitter pins, which I think are wonderful, and I really enjoy using them. And then I have got some comparable, if you don't wanna purchase the Kaisercraft, Jelly Roll Moon Glow have a great deal of the same colors that the Kaisercraft pastels do. And of course, obviously I love Jelly Roll pins. So if you wanted to pick up those, I know some of you bought the entire package and wanted to know how to use them. I would say absolutely yes, you can use these as substitute for the Kaisercraft pastels. Okay, so let's move on and let's talk about some of the other tools that you will need in this. I'm going to set this aside for the time being. Uh, for the pins and initially for the turtle, obviously you need, um, if you go to the website, www.medinadomarts.com, go look under, up at the tool, on the toolbar under the word more. If you click on more, you will see A-G-Z-B-O-M. There are instructions under that particular category and the turtle is already out there. In fact, I believe even the horse is already out there. So if you wanna go take a look at those, the list of all the products is listed in um, on those that particular set of instructions. But today, again, I wanna discuss uh, the various different products that I use in uh, coloring. These are some samples uh, of the Jelly Roll pins. These are the Fabrico pins. Um, many of you have mentioned that Fabrico pens are actually somewhat difficult to get a hold of. Obviously, I, I will carry some. Uh, the first class, uh, anybody, of course, who buys a full kit from me gets all the pens for that particular block. But those of you who are doing this on your own, if you do want the pens um, and you're trying to find them and having difficulty, uh, contact me and I'll see what I can do about getting more. Um, the funny thing is these distributors carry some and when I called them the other day they actually said that fabric painting fabric coloring has kind of caught on and they are actually out of their own supply so um, if you're having trouble like I said give me a holler and, and we'll see what we can do about getting you set up with some okay those are the pins and I want to talk about some of the other tools that you will need really for just about all of this um, if you look straight down I am using, move my paintbrushes here for a minute, we'll talk about those in a minute. I am using foam board. Now I am in my studio right now and I don't normally color out here because I usually have customer quilts. 
but since it was easier to film out here on a nice big wide table, I'm doing it out here to show you everything. But if I were out here, I would typically use my foam board as a means of protecting the table so that I didn't get paint on it that might accidentally uh, run into one of my customer quilts. The other thing that I use, and anybody who attends the class, this is how we're going to color, is I do use freezer paper. And all you have to do is rip a nice big section of it off. Of course, this is HEB brand, but you can buy anything. And I typically use painter's tape that you can buy at Walmart, Home Depot, wherever. And I tack the freezer paper down onto the table and then that way my surface is protected. Um, most of this stuff, I'm gonna say, we're probably not gonna have a whole lot of problems bleeding, but just to be on the safe side, uh, you will want that. Uh, one of the classes that I taught recently, um, the lady accidentally spilled her water and uh, thank God for the freezer paper because it did protect the, the area in which she was using. So I'll set those aside here for a second. Uh, water, yes, water is very important. Um, you will want to have a, I, I, I just use old containers and with lids, uh, because I usually keep them, um, close by to where I'm working, but you'll want some water to clean off brushes and, uh, just use for general cleaning overall. Now, having said that, water is not allowed on any of these blocks, um, Hopefully, many of you who came to Shop Hop saw the deliberate example I gave of using water and, say, colored pencils. You will immediately see it start to run and bleed, and you do want to try to avoid that. Okay, the next thing that you're going to... Oh, and along with the water, you probably want a whole roll of paper towels sitting close by. Because as you clean your brushes, you are going to want to dry them off very carefully so that you don't end up using water in or accidentally getting water uh, mixed up with any of your paints or your fabric medium or the like. Um, so do be do keep a, a big roll of, of, of paper towels close by. Um, another couple of sets of tools that I use, um, I have paper cups. I usually put fabric medium in them. Little spoons, if I am dishing out paint um, I or using a tiny bit of fabric medium, at least I have tiny little things, and these come from Target in the um, paper craft section. Um, I have these little, what are these called? Everybody knows them as nose droppers. Droppers, there you go, droppers. Um, so that if you need to pick up just a tiny bit of uh, fabric medium or a little bit of color to place on your quilt, it helps you kind of keep things neat, neat and tidy. Paper plate, kind of self-explanatory, but it's something that you can use to mix color, keep everything kind of together and again, clean. Um, just a great way to, you know, kind of prevent any further accidents on the table. Other supplies that I use are these little paint pellets. And I'm just gonna show you two different kinds that I use. This one is actually one of those fingernail. Um, I guess they, put different little fingernail polish things in the middle of them. But as you can see, mine's very used. I use it quite a bit for painting, particularly when I'm in a tight space. The other thing I use, of course, is this, and this really makes it very easy um, when we start mixing paints or start mixing colors of, of different color pencils and with fabric medium, you'll have a little a hole for each one of these. So um, these are dirt cheap. You can get them for like 50 cents at uh, Jerry's Artorama or go go to Michael's or anybody, anybody has this. Um, these will be available to the people who buy a full kit. You will get at least several of these um, or these, but you will get these in your in your kit. Um, but again, um, and, and anybody who shows up at class, I'll usually have extra ones too. The next product that I wanna talk about are your paintbrushes. These will become very important as time goes on. And this will be the initial pack. Um, these are low Cornell. They're uh, white, if you see this, it says white nylon. Another word these all go by is Taclon, T-A-K-L-O-N. These are awesome paintbrushes. Um, the particular set that I have here, what's really nice is it comes in all different types of shapes, which can be used from the various tiniest area to get into to this like wider brush and and these two bigger ones to get in 
um, to bigger areas. I like this one because it's got the little sculpted in, but these are all, um, you can see that they're listed on the back. I will provide these on an ongoing basis because what you're going to find is after you use these for a few times with these blocks and you use them for a lot of different color, sometimes it's hard to wash the color out. Now I do use Dawn liquid detergent to try to get them further clean, but at some point in time, you're just gonna have to say to heck with it, throw the brush out and start using new ones. Um, so never fear, I will have plenty of these on hand. Again, anybody who needs brushes from me, be sure to let me know and I'll either send them to you in your packet or I can mail them or give them to you out in class. Okay, let's talk about some of the coloring tools that we are going to use. We've already talked about the pins and I wanna go into more details with those when I start coloring the turtle for you. But what I really wanna focus on is fabric medium, which is the glue, if you will, to how these all come to be by using colored pencils, um, e uh, pigmented paints, paints in general. Everything that is a pencil or a form of pigmented paint uses fabric medium. But you do not have to, and let me repeat that, you do not have to use fabric medium for fabric markers, gel pens, or any other kind of pen unless I specifically state so. Most of the time, these pens that I pick out, they're permanent. In fact, if you get them on your own clothes, I am so sorry, but you will wear that gel pen or fabric marker for the duration unless you can find something that will take it out and that's usually not going to make the rest of your clothes look very good. Um, so be aware that yes, can we use fabric medium? And we will use fabric medium with fabric markers as a technique, but it is absolutely not necessary to use fabric medium with any of the pins uh, that we're going to use. Having said that, let's talk about then what we are going to use um, as far as fabric medium and the different types of fabric medium and what you do want to use and what you don't want to use. Um, on the table, I'm just going to bring these over and turn them, flip them. There's a Delta a Ceramic Coat. There is Deco Art So Soft. Josonia's Textile Medium. Sherry Rogers Harrison's Ink Fusion Gold. Um, this is Tinted Fabric Medium. And this is Plain Fabric Medium. And believe it or not, there is Pearlescent Fabric Medium. All of these, in my opinion, are very acceptable fabric mediums. You can find um, all of these online. You can look up under the name. Um, these will be in my notes, by the way, so you don't necessarily have to scribble all this down while I'm talking, but I just wanna point out that these are acceptable fabric mediums that I have used. And what makes them acceptable? Well, their bleeding capabilities is minimal. Not to say that you can't have some bleeding, but it is usually very, very minimal. And it's really relatively easy for the beginner to use. What is not acceptable are things like Liquitex. Um, it is so thick that half the time you have to cut it with water. And the minute you introduce water to any of this, it, it, it lends itself to potential bleeding. So I try to stay away from any product. Um, first of all, if you're gonna pay for all this, it should work the way the product comes to you rather than having to um, play around with it. Um, there is also aloe vera gel. Um, I've mentioned this to several of you who have taken my classes in the past. Certainly an acceptable way of treating it as fabric medium, but I do find that if you use too much um, aloe vera gel that it can actually start to flake and your color can come off. So for this series of classes, I'm gonna ask that those who come to class stick with the fabric medium. I will often provide samples. Again, full kit um, subscribers will get fabric medium. And any of you who um, are using different products down the road, if you need some from me, I'd be happy to, to provide it to you, okay? put these aside and now let's talk about some pencils and the various different pencils that I use. 
Well, I mentioned already ink tense pencils, and I think if you were to go online and look at any fabric painter, you're gonna find that most people use ink tense because they are so vivid. And this is just my selection. Um, by the way, I try to maintain everything in boxes. Obviously, I travel a lot, I have to. Um, you may wanna think about having stuff like this for your own studio as you color. It does make it neater. Um, kits, those of you who get full kits, um, and any of you who have taken my classes know that typically in order to save money, I will take a pencil and I will cut it in half and I'll provide a label so that you can link it back to the color that uh, chart that I end up using for all of these kits. So know that if you are getting a kit, you will probably get a half pencil. If that bothers you, please call me and we will talk about getting you full sets of pencils. Um, honestly, and I think I've mentioned this to everyone, you can go on to Amazon and you can find ink tense pencil kits for frankly cheaper than I can buy wholesale. But because sometimes it's difficult to get these pencils, I'm not sure why, but they are, I will always have a good supply on hand, particularly for the block that we may be coloring. So please be aware of that. Now the other thing that Ink Tense comes in are these color blocks. And we will be using these. Um, I'm going to show you how to create paint out of these uh, with com combining fabric medium and scrapings. We'll actually be using pencil shavings. Uh, we're gonna be using all sorts of ways with these to create paints and to blend colors that I think make this the absolute most versatile tool in the uh, toolbox that we have. Having said that, they are all pencils. And what do pencils need? A pencil sharpener. Um, here's just a selection. I pretty much use cheap ones. Now, when I make my kits, I do have an electric pencil sharpener that is specifically for colored pencils. If you, <coughs> excuse me, try to use a regular pencil sharpener, um, these pencils are a little bit big, excuse me, bigger in size, and you can actually ruin your pencil, uh, just a regular pencil sharpener. So go to Dick Blick's Jerry's Artorama, and look specifically for a, a an electric colored pencil, pencil sharpener. Um, it, it's worth the money if you plan on using a bunch of different colored pencils. Okay, other colored pencils that I use are um, Faber-Cassell. They are made in Germany. Um, I had the opportunity to buy this set when I was in Germany, and I love them. They are fantastic. I mean, just open. They are sold here in the United States. In fact, I can get these if anybody so desires. Uh, they are beautiful. They go on just as, as much and as well as the ink tense pencils. What I do like about watercolor, they tend to be slightly less intense in their color intensity than ink tints. And as a result, um, for instance, on the running horse, um, he's almost exclusively uh, Faber-Castell uh, watercolors. Um, they do come in a 36 set. Actually, they've come in a variety of sets. Um, there's the 36. And uh, I, I just can't say enough about these. I, I really, really, really do like them. Next are Prismacolor pencils. And I, I like these. I like these a lot. Um, I did a, a sample not too long ago. Um, it was 100% Prismacolor colored pencils. Now, what makes the difference between all of these pencils? It's actually how they the color is derived. In ink tense pencils, ink tense pencils are 100% ink, dried ink. So there is no additive in them. With watercolor... It is, I believe it's gum arabic and watercolor pigment. And that makes a watercolor pencil. With Prismacolor or any other color pencils, it is, again, pigment, dried pigment, mixed with wax. So when these are used, the way they go on to paper and or fabric is slightly different between each one of them. So you will need to kind of experiment um, but these three products, uh, if you have just one set, it, that's great. You won't have any problems. 
Um, you may have to color the colored pencils slightly more heavy in order to get the same color intensity as an Inktense pencil, but you can achieve the same color, the same uh, flexibility of, of shading with, that you get with ink tints, you can do the same thing with a, a watercolor pencil. Uh, last but not least, let's talk about watercolors. You can use watercolors, and this will be taught as a technique in a couple of these. We will actually be using um, what are called pan watercolors in several of the blocks. I like them, it's very versatile. You mix them with fabric medium, and it is, they're, they're actually a pleasure to use because you can um, create such great shading with this and it lends itself very well. Um, this just happens to be a set called Van Gogh. This, this is a good product. Um, what you wanna find, don't get the little super cheapies that they sell for kids. There's not enough color pigment in them. This is Aquafine. Again, love the color. You can see, obviously, I've been using them. And um, these are Daler Roni, and I think I picked them up at uh, Hobby Lobby. Now, I mentioned earlier the Sukoniko ink. It comes in about 40 different colors, and I love these. And you'll actually find that you can use these straight, but you kind of need to have good practice with these because by themselves, they bleed real easily. Um, so what I typically will do is we'll try using these in some of our classes for people who want an alternative to Fabrico markers. You mix it with fabric medium and the thicker fabric medium slows down the bleeding that is caused by these. But these are wonderful colors. Um, a lot of people who do show quilts use Sukuniko ink in their uh, the coloring of uh, show quilts. All right, just a few other tools that I have used that I want to uh, tell you about. Um, here are some more watercolor cakes. Um, these are called Twinkling H2Os. These both, what you do is you, you put a little bit of fabric medium directly in the color itself and you let it sit for a few minutes. It melts the color and then you swish it around and voila, you can use it direct. These are from a company called Color Art. C-O-L-O-U-R-A-R-T-E. Uh, the lady is out of, uh, I believe, Sacramento or San Francisco in California. Um, she has a, an amazing arrangement of, of product. Uh, the next one of which is a pigment powder um, that I will be experimenting with in class. If, I, if It's hard to see this, but believe it or not, that is pigment that you mix with uh, fabric medium. And it's got mica in it. And so it too sparkles. Um, she also has a, various, a variety of lines of acrylic paints. I, I didn't really care for those. Um, I have used them, but frankly, they dry out really quick. Uh, and so I, I tend to stay away from them. Now, just real quick about containers. Uh, everything I like to use, whether it's for my paints, my fabric mediums, even the bling, I do not and will not use this type of snap-on cap. And if you think about it, it makes sense. If I go, and we're all older, I think, um, and our hands are, are somewhat, you know, you go to pull this off, and that's pigment in there. That pigment, when you go to lift this cap off, a bit will just fly out, and you can get it everywhere. And, and as I said, I'm in the studio. I would never want to have one of my customer quilts, nor I think would any of y'all want your quilts touching anything that has pigment because the minute this gets wet, it immediately starts to color. And this is very permanent pigment, by the way. I, I, I forgot to mention that all of her colors are very color fast. Be beautiful, gorgeous colors, but they will stain anything, including your hands, if you get them on you. Um, but mainly, I just wanted to talk about the caps because as you create your little workstation for these blocks, um, you will want to have a variety of containers to use to either store your pencils, like we have down here, or store your fabric medium, which you just saw earlier, 
And uh, again, if you have any questions about any of this, uh, give me a call and I'll tell you what I use. Last but not least, I do want to tell you about a company where um, basically I get most of my um, fabric medium supplies. Pro Chemical and Dye. They're out of Fall River, Massachusetts. Great stuff. They do, this is one of their fabric paints. Um, it's called Profab Pearlescent Paint. They are the ones I buy my pearlescent extender from so that I can make a pearlescent fabric medium that many of you have used before. Um, but they have great paint supplies. So if while you're doing these, you would like to try fabric paint, I can't recommend these guys enough. Um, they, they are some of my favorite. Jacquard, J-A-C-Q-U-A-R-D. They also make great fabric paints, um, but honestly, um, these are just my favorites. I like the colors. I like the way they go on. Uh, they too, you do not need fabric medium. It's already made into the paint. So you just paint and heat set and away you go. Okay, that is just about it for all of the coloring tools. I'm going to put this on pause and we'll talk about what you need or what we will be using as far as bling tools. Thank you.